That part. Always. Always, bro. They either A, never have children go to public school, they're homeschooled, or B, don't even have kids in general. In Indiana, under Republican governance, their, their new law there on, on books in schools threatens school librarians with felony convictions. Felonies. Threatens to put librarians in prison if they don't abide by Republicans' new book bans. The Indianapolis Star recently reported on how Captain America comic books were among the books being banned in Indiana schools now for being somehow offensive to Republicans. Apparently, after that ended up in the paper, they, they decided that Captain America had been removed in error and they needed to put him back. But that's the kind of level of... Folks, all clouds are bunnies. Thank you for the five of the subs. I once again ask myself, who's this for? Like, the main goal for a dumb shit like this is supposed to be, because it's culture war shit, it's supposed to be to, like, capitulate to a very, uh, a very active voter base that you want to target. Okay? But I don't know who's like, man, I'm so glad we're banning these books, brother. Like, it's just not working like that. I, I don't see it. Maybe I'm fucking wrong. Maybe I've lost the plot. Maybe these Republicans are fucking absolute crazy, okay? Sure would, you know, make my commentary a lot easier to just say that and leave it at that. But I personally don't think the normies are demanding that, like, books are fucking banned. I'll give you a good example. Your Rage Gaming. Now, Your Rage Gaming is far from a normie. He actually does consume a lot of political content, but he does have normie-adjacent takes in many respects. Charlie also covered another aspect of this story that I'm going to mention here, okay? But I saw something that I found very interesting. Now, of course, uh, hopefully the the not safe for work uh, photo that he posted on the timeline is gone. Okay, it's gone. Didn't want to show that to you. But here, look at this. Philip Lewis posted, a staff member at a Florida school says the state decided what books were appropriate and inappropriate and shows huge box filled for books waiting to be removed. Okay. Your rage looked at this and said, this is crazy. Uh, for the record, this apparently is, is fake. Uh, Broward County schools have confirmed that the video showing the normal inventory books at the end of the year. These books are not currently being removed. You're definitely out of touch. They eat up this trans shit. They only watch Fox News. No, man. No. I don't think people want to hear about trans people constantly. It gets fucking annoying. Just like people don't want to hear about racism constantly. It gets fucking annoying. And then all of a sudden, liberals have like a bad rap. And everyone's always like, oh, man, fucking libtards are getting offended again. No one cares about someone being offended over and over again. You get offended one fucking time, that's fine. You make a big stink about it one time, that's fine. You make it your entire fucking uh, real life's work that that's all you do is like hysterically fucking endlessly yell at like librarians and school teachers and, and all the like that, you know, normal people are interacting with on a regular basis that have family members that are fucking working in schools and shit like that. They're going to start getting annoyed with you. Okay. Hey, brother, think about what you are doing right now. God bless. Wait, what? Culture war issues that are supposed to be distracting are supposed to be fun. Okay. When you get to a point where someone like Rage is saying, this is crazy. Only part of Florida that matters is South Florida. Everywhere else is some yeehaw shit aside from Tampa and Orlando. But like when you got a guy like Rage uh, saying this is like too much, even though this is fake news. Okay. When you got a guy like Moist Critical making a video about like uh, a manga being banned from schools, that is, uh, at least for a younger audience and, and for an audience of like more normie adjacent people, like people are starting to get annoyed with this kind of endless fucking, this kind of endless crying, okay? Nobody likes smarmy, self-important crybabies. Okay, it's not for anyone. I don't know whether to applaud or cry about this post investigation showing that the majority of book challenges were filed by just 11 people. This is the media world we live in now. 
Yeah. The objections to sexual LGBT books or whatever the fuck are literally coming from the most annoying psychopath you've ever fucking encountered. It is like the abortion shit, except worse, because at least the abortion shit was like 35 fucking years of like active pushes coming from the white evangelical Protestant base of voters that were that 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 were captivated by it. The anti-LGBT shit is like one mom who's bored, who like is fucking being crazy about it. It's always a couple fucking moms that like are the most annoying moms you've ever fucking seen. CNN actually talked to a Moms of Liberty person and I Moms for Liberty person and I want you guys to take a look at this person and tell me if you think that this fucking freak Governor Ron DeSantis. I want you to tell me if you think that this fucking freak, like, because these are the freaks that we're talking about. Is this the one? Is this the, is this a, oh, yeah, here it is. A sit down conversation with Moms of Liberty. I want you to tell me if you think this fucking freak has, like, uh, any kind of national prominence. If you think this fucking freak is going to be popular with all the other moms who see them, okay, who see moms like this and go, ew, gross. He brings a renewed spotlight on what opponents called his don't say gay law. It initially banned teacher, teaching Florida students about sexual orientation and gender identity through the third grade. It's been expanded last month through high school. Opponents call it dangerous and vague. It's led to book bans that have included authors such as Toni Morrison, Margaret Atwood, and Judy Bloom. It's part of an overall conservative push on education across the country. In the state of Florida, we're proud to stand for education, not indoctrination in our schools. The left. I lit her out already. She didn't pee or poop. Wing rioting and mayhem are the direct result of decades. Every of time she barks doesn't mean she wants to poop. Sometimes she does attention barking. Other times she barks. Sometimes she's barking for attention. Because she's bored and wants to get out of the crate. Other times she's actually barking. Other times she's actually barking because uh, she actually does have like a valid reason. Like she needs to get out. Um, she learned barking equals attention. Oh no, dude. From day one, she's been barking. She has a very... Dogs also famously have a very loud bark too. So they're like, I mean, not really much I can do. I, I don't really respond at all when she barks. Except for when I think that she's barking because she wants to poop. But it is what it is, you know? I'm turning my head when she's not barking. In our schools. The Democrats believe that parents shouldn't have a say in their kids' education. Parents want schools focused on reading, writing, and math, not woke politics. The left is trying to hijack women's sports. And our schools are on the verge of becoming breeding grounds for liberal and progressive ideas. Daniel fucking Cameron, baby. Kentucky's very finest, gigantic piece of shit. Uh, Mitch McConnell's, like, own protege. DeSantis' law also led to his ongoing fight with Disney. One of the people he appointed to a board that was supposed to provide more oversight of Disney was the co-founder of a group called Moms for Liberty, which has advocated for these classroom fights in school districts across America. Ellie Reeve has more on who they are. By exposing our children to adult concepts such as gender identity, we are asking them to carry a load that is much too heavy for them. Might I suggest, instead of anal sex, perhaps we could go back to teaching cursive. This book is not appropriate, and it is in your schools. Moms for Liberty is a parent activist group. It began in Florida in 2021 to protest public schools being closed for COVID and mask mandates. The group became a frequent and spicy presence at school board meetings. This is about more than masks, for the record. But now there are more than 250 Moms for Liberty chapters nationwide, the group says. And it has gained major conservative allies and morphed into something else, a I'm campaign so against supposed indoctrination poop. of children on race and sexuality. I have the right to say, I don't want my kids to learn this. I don't Good agree girl. with this. Movement. No barking. And that's my right. So books should fall into that category. But you mean to tell me that that lady, like other ladies uh, that look exactly like her, are not going to fucking look at that and go, ew, she's gross. Like, what the fuck? As well. We wanted to understand what's driving these moms on a deeper level than some viral videos. So we met with the Moms for Liberty chapter in El Paso County, Colorado, 
where conservatives won majorities on three school boards in 2021. Leader Darcy Shanning let us watch a meeting where they talked about how to pressure those boards into making the policies they want. What school districts are most of you guys in? What Moms for Liberty has become most famous for is claiming school libraries contain books with pornographic content and for trying to get some books removed. Some of those books listed do talk about sex, but according to the Supreme Court's definition of obscenity, they're not porn. I've read a lot of criticism of your group. People say that this is kind of like a, a moral panic, that people have an irrational fear of what's going on. We're not looking to to ban books. We're not looking to burn books. We just need to get back to a system where parents know what their kids are learning and for the most part it's educational and not political. One of the books on your list is Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse-Five. I mean, it's considered one of the classics of modern literature. Right, I read that in high school. Well, yeah. why would we, would you want that removed from the no, library? No, we don't, again, it's age appropriate. List. What might not be appropriate for a six-year-old is appropriate for a 15-year-old. Is someone assigning a first grader at the Slaughterhouse Five? Uh, no, but again, it's the right of the parents to know that it's there, that their children have access to something that they may not have access to at home. One of the big issues right now is pronouns. In March, Colorado's District 11 school board considered a proposal to prevent teachers from asking kids their pronouns, sparking protests. Teachers can no longer ask kids their pronouns. That's right, no more grooming kids with pronouns in D11. The school board has tabled the proposal. Why is asking a child their pronouns indoctrination? If you ask my children, who are seven and eight, what are your pronouns? They don't even know what that is. So when you ask that, you're planting what? the seed in their minds that they maybe should identify as another gender or that identifying as another gender is hip or cool. Hey, my teacher's asking me, so maybe this is what I should do. But I certainly never felt that way about my teachers. Like, I didn't learn I was heterosexual from my health teacher. It was from like watching 90s movies with Brad Pitt in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and but and I, I think that's how most of us are. Is children can get on there. And we wanted to hear what some of the more liberal parents had to say. Some of them sat in on the meeting, and one passed me this note calling it a hate group. The next day, we met with those parents. For the record, have any of your kids ever come home and said, I am feeling peer pressure to be gay or trans? No. no. <laughs> Naomi Lopez is a speech pathologist and works in a District 11 school. First of all, we're not going around saying, okay, you know, I want you to think about it. What gender are you? Yeah. Like, that's not happening. Period. They say it's happening. It's not. My personal beliefs, my personal viewpoint on the world does not come into the classroom. We are professionals with degrees in pedagogy. And she's also the mom of a transgender student. So... I'm sorry, can you ask me again? Because I'm getting pissed off. Um, what, <laughs> you already got a trans this, daughter. Why does it make you emotional to talk about this stuff? So I she trains their own daughter, and now she wants to train your daughter. What the fuck? <laughs> Do you think anti-trans Republicans are watching CNN reports? Wait, what? No, dude. This is for you to get a better understanding of what some of these freak, freaks look like. She's not one of them. But I want you to see what these fucking freaks look like because that's who is going to be representing this movement at the parent-teachers conference. And your mom is going to go there. Your mom either works at the school or your mom is a parent there. She's going to see this fucking psychotic person who's like, basically seeing red and she's gonna think that's gross my kid has gay friends they're fine they're pretty kind okay not this person i'm talking about the other one the the freak who was like yeah you can't read kurt vonnegut in first grade it's like yeah no one is reading that you fucking loser do you understand what i'm trying to say i'm trying to say that like the people that represent your movement, if your movement is not like one that has broad public support, and this certainly doesn't, okay? If, if 
uh, if the people that represent your movement are like the sweatiest, grossest fucking losers, which uh, the abortion protesters were, they were fucking freaks always, right? And then on top of that, uh, the abortion uh, abortion was like broadly popular in comparison to the the uh, you know the the uh, trans movement is not as popular. There's more apathy towards trans people than anything else. But the abortion, the counter movement, like the pro choice movement, was was incredibly popular, significantly more popular than the abortion one. But there was actually an anti-abortion movement. There is no like genuine anti-trans. Uh, a grassroots backed movement that's saying like that's going to legislators and calling up their offices to be like you need to stop transing our children immediately you need to stop the schools like it's completely completely created by lobbyist groups and special interest groups that are getting paid by churches that are getting paid by like nefarious republican projects it's all none of it is grassroots it's all like it doesn't have a real audience that looks at those bills and goes, thank God they're doing the right thing, brother. OK. No one is fucking turning around and going, thank God they banned the one fucking 12 year old trans person from like participating in swim meets in the state of Utah. You know what I mean? So when you're astroturfing this shit, it's not going to actually have an ROI that you expect if you genuinely push for this kind of bill. They are foolish. Republicans are behaving in a manner where they're stupid enough to believe their own bullshit. Like, why would you believe your own AstroTurf movement? I'm willing to bet that there is no anti-trans as a single issue constituency in the United States of America. It never shows up in the polls. It never, ever shows up in the polls. If there was a constituency... There would be like, I don't know, 10% of the Republican voter base that's like, I want to deal with this trans shit. I want to kill all the trans people, like something. You know what I mean? It's always triggering the fucking libs, protecting gun rights. That's it. They don't even say fix the economy anymore. They just say triggering the fucking libs. That's like the major thing. Read some online hog forums and you'll know it's true. Yes, what you're talking about is, again, hyper-specific. Hyper fucking specific. You're looking at people that are on the r slash conservative subreddit. How many real fucking conservatives are on the r slash conservative subreddit, dog? Get the fuck out of here. Doesn't trans stuff fall under wokeness? No, wokeness is everything. That's like ridiculous to say that it's just trans stuff. Girl Divya says, I don't care if it's a grassroots movement or SIGs. This is still harming us. Yeah, obviously, that's not what I'm talking about. If I were to sit here and be like, is the, is the uh, anti-trans movement and the Republican state legislature's passing bills genuinely harming trans people? Of course it is. That's not my point. That's not what I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about the electoral consequences. I'm talking about who they're doing this for, why they're doing this, okay? It's important to understand that. Like, it's important to assess that uh, the overwhelming majority of, of American citizens are just apathetic. They demonstrate apathy towards trans people. They do not have like genuine hatred in the same way that like Matt Walsh has. That's important to understand for one, electoral considerations. And that's even important to understand for like understanding American society and American culture and making interpretations about what the future might look like is what I'm doing here. If, understand, if most people just have apathy towards trans people and one side is manufacturing this outrage machine that's like hysterically crying about children's genitals all the fucking time, all the fucking goddamn time, eventually those people are going to be perceived as overall negative. People are going to look at them and go, yeah, those guys are like hysterical. They're fucking smarmy. They're annoying. They're attention seeking and they're fucking hysterical. There's always, a, there's always a, a pendulum swinging in the other direction. It happened under the Obama administration because on, uh, under the Obama administration during, uh, you know, uh, for, for a big, for a long period of time, the liberals were canceling everything. It's cancel culture, it's cancel culture. And the Republicans latched onto that. But the reason why that was like a, such a permanent thing was because, yes, a lot of liberals were very fucking smarmy and very annoying and constantly woke scolding. And more importantly, cutting your commodities Cutting your commodity consumption, telling you you can't have that treat. Your treat should be different. It should be designed to tailor my needs, okay? That shit will inevitably always 
frustrate Americans because all we have are the commodities that we consume. All we have are the treats that we have. So if this fucking anti-trans shit keeps going on and they're advocating for it, even though there is no real viable constituency that like demands it, that makes it their single issue uh, voter thing, if they keep fucking doing that, inevitably people are going to be like, I I'm done. I'm not even voting. This fucking bullshit. I don't give a fuck. Okay. You can't tell conservatives not to eat jalapeno poppers because, uh, I don't know, uh, Applebee's decided to have a trans spokesperson because after a while they're going to go, fuck this, this sucks. Fox shows the trans shit as the libs getting owned. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. It doesn't matter how much they try to fucking make it seem like they're uh, getting owned. They don't want CNN to go to school board meetings. It does not matter. It doesn't matter. I promise you. This is, you saw the electoral consequences of hyper-focusing on like, children's genitals during the midterms biden was supposed to get fucking destroyed the economy was worse than ever before inflation was sky high and the republicans couldn't even get a super majority in either of the fucking house of the senate when it when all electoral pros prospects at the time for them looked incredible the only reason why they didn't do that is because they fucking hyper focused on dumbass bullshit there was no red wave you have to remember that if there is no viable fucking constituency, if there's no viable constituency and we're going off the whims of like eight fucking people, I talked to a lot of hogs, brother. I wish it wasn't true. They think I'm a pedo for pushing trans rights. Yeah, there are going to be fucking freaks. I'm not saying that there aren't freaks. There aren't, I'm not saying that there aren't freaks, but the idea that like every fucking gay person or trans person is a pedophile is not going to work in the fucking suburbs. Okay. It's not. Kaya, shut the fuck up. Stop. Sit. Sit down. Sit. Shut up. Sit. Sit. Hey. Oh my God. She's being fucking so annoying. I don't know. I can't tell if she needs to poop or if she's being fucking annoying. I, I don't know. I don't know if she's just like, yeah, we're not talking about Kentucky. We're talking about swing state white women. Yeah, exactly. We're talking about suburban, upper middle class individuals. They, that's like the voter base for either party at this point, okay? How do you captivate the suburban, upper middle class individuals? If you constantly fucking talk about ch children's genitals, they're not going to vote. They're not going to participate in your fucking party antics anymore. And that is what happened in the midterms, okay? And it's not the... It's not like the 19 fucking 80s any longer, Okay? It's not the 1980s any longer. Uh, depressive uh, voter turnout actually favors people like Joe Biden in this regard. I get emotional when other people who don't have children who are transgender or queer place an assumption on it for the, for the sake of persecution based on their own belief. When you're putting all this curriculum everywhere and you're telling kids, hey, come, you could come talk to me behind your parents' back. I got your back. I mean, there's a clear move to bring more of that into our schools, and it's just not the school's place. So what I feel like you're strongly implying, and I would like to get your take on, because I don't want to attribute something that you don't think, but to me, it sounds like you're saying there's some kind of high-level coordinated effort to make more children trans and gay. Yes. Yeah. Well, who's directing that? Teachers unions and um, our president and a lot of funding sources and teachers unions are also heavily backing the curriculum that we're bringing into schools. Why would they want more kids to be gay and trans? Because it breaks down the family unit, which breaks down traditional conservative values. It breaks down a lot of- This is perfect. Oh, fuck. I forgot the best part. I'm sorry. I got to run it back. This is best part. And this implied, is very important. And I would like- what I feel like you're strongly implying, and I would like to get your take on, because I don't want to attribute something that you don't think, but to me it sounds like you're saying there's some kind of high-level coordinated effort to make more children trans and gay. Yeah. Well, who's directing that? Teachers unions and um, our president and a lot of funding sources and teachers unions are also heavily I'm sorry, but if you think like upper middle class white moms, like wine moms that are like otherwise conservative are going to look to someone like that and go, wow, she's really spitting right here. You're out of your fucking mind.
If you're talking to a dumbass hog who's like already broke and still voting for the fucking Republican Party, that's entirely separate. This is some QAnon shit, man. And the broad majority of the country does not agree with it, okay? You might have Republicans that are outspoken about it. You might have some crunchy granola people that agree with the QAnon shit. But like, this is schizo posting on the main. Oh, backing the curriculum that we're bringing into schools. Why would they want more kids to be gay and trans? Because it breaks down the family unit, which breaks down traditional conservative values. It breaks down a lot of things in this country. It changes the way that people think. It changes the way that people um, handle politics. Of course, there's no evidence of a coordinated plot to make kids trans. When I hear those thoughts about like some sort of concerted effort to make people gay. Does it sound like a conspiracy theory to you? Um, it's not a conspiracy theory that the state, whether you're talking about Colorado or the federal government, is taking a stronger and stronger. So fucking annoying. Like the way she carries herself, I put her upstairs in the balcony to poop because she's been barking too much and I think she needs to poop. After that, I'm going to crater. What's up? What are you doing? I just put her in the balcony, Marat. If you want, you can take her out after she poops. Okay. I'm going to crate her after. Stronger hand in public education, in raising our kids. So do I think that for some reason people want everyone to be gay? That's a mischaracterization of what I think. I think that people will use... You know, the people that want to erode away at parental rights, the left, the teachers unions, they'll use LGBTQ or whatever may be the case at the time. Those are just tools to erode away at parental rights. The last D11 meeting of the school year was mostly about you student awards that, and performances. The board seemed to anticipate the few Moms for Liberty members in the crowd. As we reflect over the last year, removing... Someone in the chat said, this is... Someone just in the chat said, it's weird seeing someone with hand tats talking about traditional conservative values. That is exactly what I'm talking about when I say motherfucking people with blue hair are, SJ are no longer just SJWs, okay? I see it every fucking day, man. I see it every day. We look at hogs nonstop. A lot of hogs are, they're, they're, the aesthetics of like who a hog is and who is actually a, a, a liberal, a libtard, or whatever, is, is not as clear and as well-defined as you thought it was, those lines are fucking blurred now. There's a shitload of crystal mommies who are QAnon, for example. Being rogue woke clubs, teachers, woke teachers, and woke counselors from D11 is a must. And a couple of students push back. If you remove teachers' ability to ask for pronouns, you will remove the ability for safe spaces to exist, taking away the safety of your students. I want to recognize uh, our students and the support staff that are supporting our students out there. My child thinks it's ludicrous that it's such a big deal because to them, it's just normal. To their friends, they don't care how my child identifies. They love them for who they are. And Ellie Reeve joins me now. Is it, um, is it clear to you which side of this debate has the most support or momentum in, you know, in, in that school district, for instance? Well, to be clear, Shaning's kids have never gone to public school. She says she doesn't ah, want them to be Wait a minute, her kids don't go to public That part! Always. Always, bro. They either A... Never have children go to public school, they're homeschooled. Or B, don't even have kids in general. You're going to tell me that moms that go to the fucking parent-teachers conferences and shit are going to see this like hysterical, panting, cackling hyena in the background and someone's going to ask her the question, so where do your kids go to school? And she says, oh, I homeschooled them. You think those moms are going to ever take that fucking entire movement seriously? Are you out of your fucking mind, dude? No. They're a nuisance. They're fucking annoying. No shot, dude. Yo, is this a VOD? Because I've seen this episode before, goddammit. No, it's not a VOD. It's just a consistent factor, always. Public school. No, they've okay. never been. She hopes maybe by high school, the schools will be good enough for her kids. 
Um, the other liberals we talk to, the liberal parents whose kids do go to that school, they say it's not the majority opinion. So for example, one parent complained about five books and that meant that the district had to create committees to determine whether those books were obscene or they could stay. And in the end, all five stayed, but one parent who served on that committee said it was just a huge waste of time and resources. Uh, Ellery, thank you, really fascinating. There you go. There you fucking go, dude. I hope you understand. Someone in the chat said, remember, they don't care about what their children are learning. They care about what other children are learning, and that's the truth. You always have to remember that.